What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have the New Orleans Saints versus Denver Broncos recap and review. And if you didn't know, yes, there was a game today. The New Orleans Saints played the Denver Broncos, who had no active quarterback on their roster and had to resort to a practice squad wide receiver who went one for nine on pass attempts with two interceptions and 13 yards on the day. You got to really respect the Denver Broncos for not forfeiting this game, making sure everybody got their game checks and going out there and, and, and losing because they had no other choice but to go out and lose. Of course, it's an NFL team, but they had no shoulder to lean on, and in the end, that resulted in their demise. The New Orleans Saints beat the Denver Broncos 31-3 at the mile high. I mean, man, this game really didn't feel like we won 31-3. to Taysom was really bad. We'll get into that. And it just felt overall sloppy on the day. It didn't feel great. It didn't feel like a classic dominant Saints win where there's high flying, footballs thrown everywhere, passes being caught, just shitting all over the opponent. No, this was a more mellow and a more hammer down and win kind of game. We got the hell out of mile high with a win. And I guess that's all that matters. The Saints have won eight straight and have advanced to 9-2 and two on the season, holding that first seed in the NFC hostage yet again. Because of the lack of competition, we didn't really get to learn much about this New Orleans Saints team. We didn't really get to learn much about Taysom Hill as a quarterback. We didn't really get to learn much about how he'd play against a good defense. What we learned wasn't good, but we didn't learn much. And there was a lot left out on that field that could have been answered if the Broncos did have somebody like Drew Locke playing where Taysom had to go into duel mode and wasn't sitting there second guessing himself all day let's go ahead and get into the positive and negative aspects of this game though positives the run game looked absolutely phenomenal Latavius Murray had 19 carries for 123 yards and two touchdowns on the ground that is his second game this year with two rushing touchdowns oh the other games that he's played this season he hasn't had a single one besides those two games so whenever Latavius Murray gets a heavy load he usually pays it off that may be a signal to Sean Payton to start you using this guy more. Alvin Kamara had 11 carries for 51 yards. He wasn't brought up in the best situations. A lot of the play calls he was put into were absolutely atrocious, but we're going to let that be what it is. Taysom Hill had 10 carries on the ground for 44 yards and two touchdowns as well. Another positive to this game is that the defense played absolutely phenomenal, even though they kind of had to and they kind of were supposed to because of the fact that they were playing a, a wide receiver at quarterback. We had one sack, five quarterback hits, Four passes defended and two interceptions. Demario, Cam, Quan, everybody played absolutely phenomenal. Malcolm Jenkins even had a forced fumble on quarterback Philip Lindsay. And uh, Quan Alexander almost took it to the crib, but because of a clutch stop by Garrett Bowles, it didn't go all the way. So uh, another positive there is the defensive side of the ball. Now let's get into the negatives. The negatives, man. Taysom Hill, and I don't care what you guys say, call me a fake fan all you want, Taysom Hill did not look like a quarterback today. He looked absolutely terrible. He was 9 for 16 with 78 yards, one interception. He took three sacks and he had a 43.2 rating, but the problem with Taysom Hill today weren't even his stats for me. The fact that he had the, the terrible decision making, throwing into double coverage multiple times, and the really horrible timing issues, they were so bad that Taysom Hill had resulted in three sacks. This dude for some reason thinks that the offensive line is going to give him 40 five seconds to make a decision as to where he's going to throw the ball miss wide open wide receivers and just take a sack it's not quarterback level play in this National Football League and that is something that has to be ironed out. He played the Atlanta Falcons and did great. I told you guys to give him one or two more weeks before we say anything about him. We did that and today he looked completely opposite of what he looked like against the Atlanta Falcons. It was genuinely pretty, pretty bad. Apparently Sean Payton said about Taysom though that he played the game exactly how he wanted him to play it. I guess that was controlling the ball, minimizing turnovers as much as he can and run the ball, but I, I genuinely just whenever he dropped back to pass I got scared because he just didn't look comfortable he didn't look ready he did not look like an NFL quarterback and that's something that's going to have to change if we want to keep him as the starter and keep ignoring the fact that we have Jameis 
Jameis Winston on our bench. I just think that this should be a more open quarterback competition. I don't think Sean Payton should force Taysom to be in this role just because of the comments he's made about him to the media because we all know that ego of Payton's is insane. I do think Taysom does have a great chance to bounce back next week. We play the Atlanta Falcons again and hopefully he can replicate his performance he had the first time if we do play uh, or if he does start that game against Atlanta. So yes, Taysom Hill's, Taysom Hill's play was definitely a negative, but we have two other negatives as well. The first negative, other than Taysom Hill, is the Janoris Jenkins injury. It looked pretty bad. We still don't 100% know what it was, but from the fact that a, a, a sports doctor, an ex- sports doctor said that reviewing the footage it looked like a mild left high ankle sprain but when Janoris Jenkins went onto the bench he was grabbing at his knee and that's going to be a problem especially with how he landed after getting the interception that he got it could have been a hyperextended knee that's what I'm hoping for but we'll just have to see Marquez Callaway also got hurt during this game and ended up going to the medical tent where he was and he ended up getting ruled out and replaced by yours truly's favorite Austin Carr so this game was pretty interesting interesting. There were a lot of things that I liked. There were a lot of things I didn't like. I, I just feel like we didn't learn a lot about this Saints team today. There wasn't much competition to be had. The Denver Broncos got they they got thrown out to the Wolves, man. Mad respect to Denver fans. You guys did not deserve to have to watch what you had to watch today because good God, it, it just, that's what happens when you have no quarterback and you only have one night to prepare for not having that quarterback. So, like I said, the Saints win 31-3. to um, To me, though, it was not a convincing win win. Of course, I'm happy with a win. The fact that we got a win regardless on our record while Drew Brees is out, putting us one step forward to getting our Hall of Fame quarterback back is awesome. But just this isn't this isn't there. This isn't the win that uh that's going to make me confident about this team without Drew. Uh, it actually took a st- a step back from what I was feeling with Atlanta. I just needed to see. An, I just need to see one more dominant game from Taysom Hill to be like, yes, let's go. We got this. So I'm gonna give player of the game right here to. I don't know how you don't give this to Latavius Murray, aka Tay Train, who, like I said, 123 yards on the ground, two rushing touchdowns, while also having a six point five yards per carry average it's almost like whenever we let this dude eat he eats he feasts he looked absolutely fantastic today someone that i am very happy we have in the backfield with alvin kamara uh i'm just let me know what you guys think in the comment section about the win um it's a great win i'm glad that we won the way we did 31 to 3 absolutely massive blowout but I just, it's not something to get excited for. It's not something to ride home about, in my opinion. But, of course, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. So, go ahead and comment down in the comment section below. Let's get looking forward to this Atlanta Falcons game. Videos coming out for that Atlanta Falcons game starting tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you boys in the next one. Adios. Jumping on a trampoline